I bought the ultimate Superman action figure for $100, but what's so good about it and is it worth the hefty price tag? Let's talk about it. This is the Mafex Superman from Frank Miller's comic The Dark Knight Returns. Now I've wanted to start a collection of DC figures for a minute, and since I haven't picked up a Mafex figure in about 6 months, I figured I'd give their selection a shot. This figure was actually a recommendation by Unparalleled Universe during a live stream, so massive shout out to Wade and be sure to check out his channel. The Dark Knight Returns is one of the most famous stories within DC Comics, so much that they even made an animated movie for it, and Mafex has a bunch of figures from it including this one. For my first DC figure, I wanted something that was iconic, clean, and had a good bit of articulation, so this Superman seemed like the perfect choice. In my humble opinion, Mafex has some of the best looking boxes when it comes to their figures, and this one is no exception. You get an all black box with a matte finish and a window cutout showcasing Superman and all the included accessories inside. All over, there's a bunch of logos like DC, Batman The Dark Knight Returns, Mafex, and Metacom Toy. Both sides of the box show off some shots of the figure, while the back features some more product shots letting you know what this figure is capable of. Mafex is an import company, so they let you know that your figure is authentic by checking for the seal at the bottom of the box. The inside of the box has a tray with the figure, accessories, an articulated stand, and Mafex's certificate of authenticity. Of course, out of everything included, the Supes figure is the star of the show, so let's have a look at him. Now this is my second Mafex figure, but I always feel super nervous when having these figures in hand because I don't want to ruin them. I'm truly impressed with the amount of detail and accessories this dude comes with, and I think Mafex handles this very well, especially with their comic book figs. The entire figure feels like it was ripped from the pages of Miller's comic, so huge props to Mafex for nailing this design. First things first is the head sculpt, and this thing looks great. He's got his chiseled face with a serious expression on it, and the printing turned out well. A minor detail I noticed is the slight printing in between the eyebrows, and I always appreciate these subtleties because it shows just how far these companies are willing to go for their figures. Another thing Mafex nailed is Soup's hairstyle with that slicked back hair and that crazy swoop at the front. Frank Miller's design for Superman has a build that's very bulky at the top and then slims down a bit as you work your way down. The proportions of this figure seem accurate to me, especially with a side by side comparison to this page from the comic, so I have no complaints when it comes to this. There's a good bit of muscle definition on his chest and abdomen, a couple of wrinkles on his suit, and the back has some more muscle sculpting to add to that bulky build of his. I also noticed that the outlines for his chest symbol are sculpted on rather than just being painted, which I thought was a nice touch. When it comes to the arms on this figure, they have the same amount of bulk that the torso does, and the sculpting really sells that look. I don't remember mentioning this in the past with my Robocop figure, but I admire the way that Mafex handles the joints for their elbows and knees because it has a natural look that fits the rest of the design in my opinion. Out of the box, the figure is rocking a pair of fists that look kinda big, and this is something that continues throughout each pair of hands included. As for his cape, the fabric used feels quite nice. It's got a rough texture to it, the symbol is printed on, and it's also wired which I'll show off a bit when we look at the articulation. However, I do wish that the straps for the cape near his chest were a bit wider because that's kinda how it looks in the shots from the comic and the movie, but it's no biggie. Moving further down the figure, there's that iconic belt and underpants combo that's been seen throughout the many years of Superman's design. I love how the color of the belt is that pale yellow seen in the comic, and taking a closer look, I also notice a slight transition in the color of the underpants that sort of creates a shaded look to this part of the suit. Both of the figure's legs look absolutely shredded, like Supes isn't skipping leg day at all. I also notice the muscle details on each leg are slightly different from each other, which is good because it would be kind of weird if they were identical and that's not really how muscles work on legs. The sculpting of the boots is on point. I love the wrinkling for that added detail and the same color variation that's seen on the underpants with that dark and lighter shade of red. There's so much to admire about this figure alone, but it doesn't end there because Mafex included some accessories to enhance the experience. Mafex Soups has a nice selection of accessories which include a damaged head sculpt, 4 pairs of hands, a kryptonite arrow, and an articulated figure stand. The battle damage head is easily my favorite accessory in this set. It has that gritty style with a swollen eye, clenched teeth, and a massive bruise taking up one side of his face. 
Bruce truly kicked the living daylights out of Superman in this story. Another detail they changed is his hairstyle by having the hair droop down and cover his forehead a bit. If you get your hands on their armored Batman, this head would be perfect for setting up some combat shots, so I'm hoping to get my hands on that one at some point. Next up we have the hands which come in four different styles. He comes with hands that are halfway opened and look like they're reaching for something, hands for the kryptonite arrow, wide open hands, and flat hands for some flight poses. The variation of the hands is awesome because you can switch up the look for your soups as you see fit, and to me, that's a lot of fun. In a way, it kind of shows that gradual process of soups opening up his hands, so I think that that's pretty cool as well. In the story, Oliver Queen aka Green Arrow uses a kryptonite arrow to weaken Superman during his battle with Batman, and that's the same arrow seen here. It's a fairly simple piece with some sculpting on the fletching, and this bright green kryptonite arrowhead. The head is detachable, so you can't have Superman hold it with the gripping hand as mentioned before. The arrowhead is fine the way it is, but I do think it would have been cool if Mafex made it glow in the dark. Perhaps I'll grab myself some glow in the dark paint and do the deed myself because I think this would be pretty nice to have for this figure. The articulated stand is pretty much the same one that comes with every Mafex figure, which is something I appreciate them doing. It has a base with three ports, a long bar, an articulated arm with screws to adjust the friction, and three types of claws to prop the figure on. It's fairly easy to assemble and it'll come in handy with poses for sure, which is the next thing I want to touch on. A lot of Mafex figures have some great articulation, even for characters that don't have a ton of movement, like their Robocop figure I bought a while back. Starting with the head, there's a standard 360 degree rotation, plus great tilt going back and forth or side to side. The joints on this thing feel buttery smooth, which is great if you want to hit that perfect angle for the head's position. Both arms have shoulder rotation, butterfly joints, bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, and swivel and tilt in the wrist. In addition to that, you can also raise the arms pretty high, which is phenomenal for hitting flight poses. Soups also has a diaphragm cut that rotates on a ball joint, tilts side to side, and back and forth. The crunch going inward and tilt going backward kind of makes sense for how bulky he is, but the ball joint in his waist allows for a bit more motion. I love that you can tilt and rotate the waist because this helps with creating some dynamic poses from the comic or just anything that fits the style of Superman really. As for the legs, there's a swivel in the upper thighs, they can be kicked out at the sides and kicked forward a bit. For the rest of the articulation, there are some double jointed knees, rotation in the ankles plus some tilt, and they rock side to side as well. The star of the show though is that toe articulation which makes your poses a thousand times better, especially when doing walking or running poses. Earlier I mentioned that the cape has a wire inside of it which is freaking amazing. Having a wire cape truly takes a figure to a whole nother level compared to those plastic capes we get for Marvel Legends. You can pose them as you see fit and capture those motions you'd see with a real cape. If I have the opportunity to replace my retro Doctor Doom cape, I'd do it in a heartbeat, no questions asked. The articulation on this figure is absolutely phenomenal, but as usual, I like to showcase the posing of a figure with a cinematic. This time around, I called in a favor, so take it away lethal. Everything about this Mafex Superman is absolute perfection. I know Miller's design of Superman from this comic isn't everyone's favorite, but if you love that design and are looking for a collectible to show your love for it, then I recommend this one for sure. There's a great amount of detail and articulation that was put into this figure, and that's what makes this figure stand out to me and justifies that $100 price tag. I've only seen the animated movie for this story, but when checking out shots from the comic, I think Mafex nailed a lot of the aspects of that style. And after giving this figure a shot, I'm down to add more of the figures from this particular comic to my collection like the Batman and Robin 2 pack or the black and gray bats riding the horse which was revealed not long ago. I do hope you all enjoyed this review and as always, if you have this figure in your collection, let me know what are your thoughts on it so we can talk about it in the comments. Also, if you have any other recommendations for comic book Mafex figures, feel free to send them my way. Of course, be sure to drop a like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss out on more action figure goodness and I'll catch you all on the next one. Peace out.